what is up everybody we are back here on YouTube saltiest gaijin MTG and we're coming to you in this video to talk about more Dominar United uh, if you haven't already we did do a top five video for our, the cards we're excited to play with in standard with the upcoming uh, standard format uh, today with this video we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about the cards we're most excited to play in Pioneer because um, though there is a little bit of well, I feel like a little bit of crossover potential um, you know it is uh, Pioneer is of course a very different format uh, with a wider variety of strategies and I, I think there's a lot of cards in the set that are gonna do uh, uh, quite a bit uh, for the format so I'm very very excited um, uh, to play more and more Pioneer uh, with Dominara United. So let's go ahead and we will dive right on in. So our very first card that we'll be talking about is an honorary mention, which we talked about these as well when we talked about the standard top five list, but it would be the Creature Lords. Um, you know, that being Valiant Veteran, Vidalian Hexcatcher, Shadowrite Priest, Rundvelt Horde Master, as well as uh, Leaf Crowned Visionary. Uh, you know, these are very powerful cards. I think out of the bunch for Pioneer specifically, the one that catches my eye at least initially is Vidalian Hexcatcher, uh, where, of course, Standard fails to have the level of support that, uh, you know, other formats have for Merfolk. Uh, there's a abundance of very powerful Merfolk in... Uh, uh, in Pioneer, you know, specifically from that Ixalan uh, set, where we have Kumana, we have the Green Maw, the, the Multicolor Lord, we have a whole bunch of role players, and so this is a card that I, I suspect will, you'll start to see a little bit uh, of some merfolk start to creep in, maybe into your local, uh, your, your local Pioneer tournament, as well as we'll maybe see it in Explorer as well, because a lot of the things I'm going to say in this video uh, could be, you know, also applied uh, in Explorer. So very exciting to see, uh, especially Voldalian Hexcatcher come in. Entirely, not not entirely sure if this makes, uh, you know, Merfolk playable. Uh, similarly, Valiant Veteran is a card that, um, uh, as a matter of fact, on our most recent stream, uh, prior to this video, uh, we played it in a mono-white human shell, believe it or not, because a lot of the good humans, at least in Explorer, happen to be soldiers. <laughs> so... Worked out very well that uh, that this card happens to be very good uh, at synergizing with uh, all of those humans that happen to be soldiers. Um, other ones, you know, things like Runevelt Horde Master. There's not a clear home where, where, where goblins. This is a powerful card, but goblins just doesn't really have the support. Uh, same with like Clerics has a bunch of good cards, but it remains to be seen if there's actually a, a you know a good amount of clerics that'll that'll hold power level wise uh, uh in the format and similar with elves where like yeah, this is definitely like a powerful tribe historically but you know we're talking modern and beyond where you have cards like uh you know, heritage druid and um, uh you know elvish arch druid and things of those uh things of those ilk but let's move on to uh our next honorary mention uh, this one, oddly enough, I didn't talk about it at all in the standard video because I actually don't look forward to playing it in standard. But Thran Portal. This is a card that I suspect, at least, will see a little bit of play in Pioneer because at the current moment, we're missing about half of the fast... missing exactly half of the fast lands and still a handful of the pain lands. Uh, so it, it's unclear if Thran Portal is good enough, but it is going to offer some fast mana to multicolor decks that don't currently have it, as well as with the way this card is templated, it actually works quite well with the Buddy Lands, uh, because it gains the basic land type, of which uh, instead of uh, picking a color. So being able to synergize with the Buddy Lands while also being like, like a fast land for certain color combinations, I foresee a world where Thran Portal... Uh, is very good. Uh, I suspect, like in like a blue-black deck, where uh, you have access to something like Urborg, uh, specifically. Uh, less so, of course, in Explorer than Pioneer. But hopefully, we'll have Urborg sooner rather than later in in Explorer. But uh, still, honorary mention card to keep your eye on for specifically Pioneer for those color combinations that don't have fast lands currently. Uh, and then, speaking of, matter of fact, actually. 
do this. Uh, the pain lands are the last honorary mention that I really wanted to bring up. Um, you know, specifically Sulfurous Spring and Carplusion Forest and then Attaker Waste. So I go like that. So these are these are pain lands. We, we had half the pain lands in Pioneer prior to this, but these three, I believe these are the ally colors. I can never remember, but uh, the these pain lands were not present. They actually haven't been printed for quite a long time. Uh, I believe like 10th edition was the last time uh, these were printed. So they were not in Pioneer and of course haven't been in Standard since then. So very exciting to see. I love the pain lands as a design. Um, They'll obviously be role players and standard, so much so that I didn't even bother to talk about them uh, in the in the standard uh, set review. But very excited to see these. Um, a few things to note: they, these are dual lands that tap for colorless mana. Um, so with the Oath of the Gatewatch Eldrazi cards, you know, being a thing that exists, like these offer the potential to uh, for something like Red Green, which actually has a pretty good Eldrazi shell. Uh, that exists same with blue white to potentially move into maybe playing um more eldrazi cards just having more lands that tap for that colorless mana symbol while also making colored mana is a pretty big gain for uh, a lot of car uh, decks in the long run and i'm excited to see that they'll be doing these hopefully we'll get the uh remaining th uh, two in the following set the brothers war but moving on to our actual list proper so coming in at number five is a card that I think is going to surprise a lot of people. And that is, ooh, if I can spell, Silverback Elder. So the best deck, well, the most powerful deck that's being played in Pioneer right now is Mono Green Devotion or you know, Green Black Devotion or you know Green whatever Planeswalkers you want to play Devotion. And Silverback Elder is a really good source of Devotion. It's not entirely clear if it will slot into the specific devotion shells we have now. But this is a, a, a card that adds a lot of devotion. It has a very reasonable body. And it has uh, this ability that whenever you cast a creature spell, you can either disenchant something, so destroy an artifact or enchantment. You could dig for a land card, which it could grab, say, a, a Nykthos or uh, you know just any other land, or gaining four life. So this card is versatile enough that I'm I'm gonna be excited to try it out in my uh, green devotion decks. Potentially, uh, you know, with sort of like my gut feeling is that if we see a ban in Pioneer, they'll likely ban Karn the Great Creator. And so part of me is thinking that Silverback Elder would be the kind of card you would see go into a more creature centric. Uh, green devotion shell where it's still an impactful five mana five seven adds the three devotion for your nick those which is really solid and then it also gives value to like those land of our elves and elvish mystics that you play post silverback elder being able to to have these abilities so very exciting to see this card um you know kind of slot into an existing strategy potentially um on not entirely confident in that, but definitely a card that I will be very enthusiastically trying out. As well as just a very unique uh, unique card. Next up is another card that I believe will slot into an existing strategy. And that is Lanawar Loam Speaker. So this is actually a card that stood out to a lot of people in preview season. Uh, so for it's a 2 mana 1-3 that can tap to add 1 mana of any color. You know, that's pretty... Pretty regular fare. That's actually not even that impressive. But the ability to tap target land you control becomes a 3 3 elemental with haste until end of turn. It's still a land. Activate only as. Excuse me, as sorcery. This is quite the powerful effect. Um, you know, specifically in combination with a card like Jeskai Ascendancy. Uh, so a lot of people think that this card will end up slotting very, very well into the Jeskai Ascendancy deck. Uh, specifically, that deck, the the combo that you're doing with that deck is that whenever you cast a non-creature spell, while well, you have a Jeskai Ascendancy in play, it gives all your creatures plus one, plus one, and it untaps them. So if you're turning your creatures into lands, uh, it can untap your lands, and then they can generate mana to play more spells. Um, and then, you know, kind of similarly... Uh, this the, those decks would play Sylvan Awakening, which turns all of your lands into two twos right away, 
uh, so not exact. So this can offer something that not only tasks for a man of any color, so it can kind of help fix your mana to maybe set up those big broken plays. Um, uh, with uh, getting out the Jeskai Ascendancy and playing another spell. But it can also just be the thing of which you use to make your cre the lands into creatures to get the uh, the combo going. So not exactly a clear upgrade over Sylvan Awakening, in Awakening exactly, because like, not exactly able to like play this on turn 2, play the uh, Ascendancy on turn 3, win the game. But it is a, a very good card that slots right into an existing deck that's on the fringes of playable. Uh, and we'll be, I'll be excited to really try out Jeskai Ascendancy Shells uh, uh, in playtesting for the regional championships uh, in November. Uh, just at the very least, to, in, in, you know, see if we can't get a, at least a proof of concept for that deck. But a very exciting card with a very unique effect that I'm sure we're going to see uh, quite a bit of. Moving on to our next card. Uh, well, it's, it's not one that stands out to a lot of people, but of all Sleeper. So this is a very, uh, well, hey, this is a tr very awesome take on a very old design. You know, starting with Figure of Destiny, uh, these creatures that are one mana and have these abilities to change themselves into a new creature type or adding creature types as well as changing their base power and toughness. So Evolve Sleeper is a one mana 1-1 one, one, with the ability of pay one black to become a 2-2 two, two, and it gains cleric typing. One of the black, if it is a cleric, then you get a death touch counter on it, and it becomes a Phyraxian human cleric, uh, as well as becoming a 3-3, and then for one black black, if it's a Phyraxian, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it, then you draw a card, you lose one life. So this is the kind of threat that, you know, it, it, it scales up to become a 4-4, four, four, and then you can, a lot of people don't necessarily catch this right away, you can keep activating that last ability to keep drawing cards, to keep putting counters on it, um, so it's a really good card that scales really well into the late game because of that. So why was this not on the standard top five? Why was it on the Pioneer top five? Well, in Pioneer, we, we the classic strategy, mono black aggro, is a deck that exists. And this is the kind of card that gives a an aggro deck a late game that, that's more meaningful. A as well as, I would go as far as to say, uh, you know, with a card like Nykthos existing in the format, there is potential, you know, green isn't the only deck that can generate devotion, right? Every color can do it. Um, you know, there's um, a card that we could talk about, uh, didn't necessarily make the cut, but Defiler of uh, Dreams was a card that a lot of people talked about being potentially good for mono blue devotion decks. Well, Ball Sleeper is a card that's potentially good for mono black devotion decks. Giving, you know, a card like Nykthos that can generate all that mana a means to uh, use that mana, uh, which you could play, because you know, if you could make seven mana, you can play a Ball Sleeper, turn it into a 4-4 and draw a card. Not the most impressive thing to be doing, but say you already have a 4-4 Evolved Sleeper, uh, and you make nine mana, and now now you have a seven seven of all sleeper where you drew three cards. So definitely a very powerful effect. Uh, it'll remain to be seen uh, if it ends up finding a home, but definitely a card that I'm very excited to be trying out uh, uh, in Pioneer, of course. Uh, next up is the card everybody's excited for, Liliana of the Veil. Liliana of the Veil is a very powerful magic card, uh, generally. I don't think that Liliana of the Veil vale lines up against Pioneer like how, say, she lines up against Modern, where traditionally she's very good in Modern because a lot of powerful creatures cost 1 and 2 mana. Uh, so in Modern, the, the, you'll find yourself when you're playing, say, uh, traditional Jun decks, where you're able to kill their 1-drop. You know, if you're on the play, uh, they play a 2-drop, you play a Liliana, you immediately use her minus 2 to make them sacrifice that creature. Uh, and then after that, you can either, they spend a removal spell on it, and so she took 2 cards from your opponent. Or you start plussing, and then eventually, uh, you know, that, that sort of eats at, uh, that, and that'll eat away at, you know, the resources your opponent has. Well, Liliana, well, she's definitely not going to be the powerhouse that people probably suspect her to be. She is going to be a huge role player in, like, decks like, uh, you know, a lot of people are going to, whether it's correct or not, force her into the red-black mid-range decks, which I'm sure it's mostly correct. Um, but I'm really excited to play this card in decks like Greasefang, 
where or other decks that have like say more copies of Kroxa. You know, things that take advantage of the fact that this plus one makes you discard a card. So it's not entirely a drawback for, for that effect to be symmetrical. So very exciting card. Awesome reprint for the format. Really pumped to see how this plays out. And I can tell you, I already I still own my four copies of Liliana's from way back in the day. So I'm, I'm, I'm really pumped just to be able to play with those again. Uh, so very exciting card, Liliana of the Veil. And then moving on. A lot of people are going to be shocked that that was not my number one card. My number one card is actually Temporary Lockdown. So this card, not as exciting for a format like Standard. Uh, it's very exciting for a format like Modern. Uh, but I also think it's going to be really good in the Pioneer format. This just being a way... Like, so there's there are decks that exist in like sort of the fringes, right, of... Uh, of uh, Pioneer, like, Red Black Sacrifice, but even just, like, Mono Green Devotion, where they have a lot of these, like, you know, one-mana creatures, one-mana enchantments, uh, you know, and so on. And I really like that Temporary Lockdown gives you a way just to sort of clean all that up, especially against something like Sacrifice, where, you know, traditionally you may not have had, like, there was not a good way to just strictly deal with, like, a witch's oven, an already called anvil, all the food tokens, all the treasure tokens. But Temporary Lockdown does a really good job of that. So this is a card that I think is going to see a lot of play, uh, at least in sideboards. Um, you know, if you play a lot of modern, you know, people know that this card is probably going to be, like, one of the best cards in this set for modern, up there next to Leyline Binding. But, uh... This is a very powerful card, and I, I put it at the top of my list because it's a very powerful, you know, it, it's oops all portable holes. And honestly, that that is a lot more than uh, than than I probably anybody was expecting us to get in this set. And that is also happens to be really good against portable hole. <laughs> but uh, of course, that's uh, that's a whole other conversation for a whole other day. So temporary lockdown comes in as probably my one of my most exciting cards. Uh, to really find a home for uh, in Pioneer. So, of course, uh, yeah, that was my top five cards for Pioneer. I want to hear what you all think. So, of course, uh, down in the comments below, you know, go ahead and let me know. What are the cards you're most excited to play with in Pioneer or even Standard or Modern or Explorer or even Historic or Commander? Now, I want to hear all about what has you very excited uh, for Dominar United. And, of course, we'll be streaming a lot with these cards where we play a lot of stand, well, a lot of Explorer and now going to be playing a lot of Standard uh, with the Dominar United set draw. So, of course, you could check us out at twitch.tv slash saltiestgaijin. And, of course, if you want to stay up to date with us here on YouTube, you can also go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And, of course, click that bell to stay notified. Of course, I appreciate you all for watching. We'll see you again soon. Thank <laughs> you.